You hear me? I don't hear you. Ah, no, no, yeah, yeah. You see me too? Start my video. Yes. Yeah! <laughs> I can't hear. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, no, yeah, getting. Yeah. Very bad. Ah, I think you hear. Better? Can I? Oh, yeah, now, yes, yeah. Good. And I want to have a different background because I am sitting in the kitchen. <laughs> Your voice is in and out. Okay, let me fix this. Uh, no, yes. Fix. Okay, no, the, how it's up. Okay, just a moment. Hold on a second, okay? You're welcome. It's all right. Oh, I do. Wow, it's uh, LA, are you? Are you in LA? Ah, ah, ah. Good. I don't, don't listen. Mm -hmm. 
I cannot. And what about the background, you know? Your default microphone has changed. I'll no, play. yes, no, I need to. Now you can, yeah. Oh. Okay, hold on. And this yeah. right. this How one. can I make the background or something else? <laughs> I've never changed the background before, but um, maybe but make somebody it, make it, no? Maybe make the background um different, like turn it a little bit, you know, like. I like this. Yeah, yeah. maybe like that. Towards the, okay. is there like a, 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 a white wall behind you? I have a, wall, a white wall side. Shall I go? Maybe better. Yeah, but it's better with no? the white wall. Okay, yeah. I, will, I will make it because it's my kitchen. <laughs> uh, this is the most stable place, you know? So yeah, that's, that's okay. I make, I make it uh, different. So, yeah, just a little bit towards the uh, white wall. That's all. That's better. Yeah, like this. Yes. Yeah. I think so. No. Yeah. Can I see my? Can you see my face? Like a real. And you listen me very well. Oh yeah, this is better. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, you cannot see so well. Mm. Oh, that's so much better. Better? Yeah. So okay. Much better. Yeah. Now Good. I can see your beautiful face. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am very, very nervous and uh, less makeup. I didn't put any makeup. No. Bit, you know, you it's pretty. a home style. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> at home. <laughs> Everybody. Uh, Katie, thank you so much for your invitation, by the way. Yeah. And uh, I hope my English is okay too, no, you know. It's... I am very shy to speak in front of people. Yeah. Because it... no, normally like uh, we play, you know, so. Of course. I don't really, really get used to like Ben, but yeah, I try. I prepare my little answer too. <laughs> no, it's good. I, it's it's also I think people need to know the real truth of what's happening. So it's good, you know. Sometimes people don't mm -hmm. know the truth of what really is happening. I talk to my friends and I ask them. I say, mm -hmm. "Hey, what is the truth? Is this really happening?" Because you know the news, the news is bullshit. <laughs> you know, <You> uh. don't. <laughs> everything. But um, yeah, we're gonna find out the truth. It's okay. Uh, let's see here. One moment. Let me fix this. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay. Uh, you could hear me though, right? Yes, I hear you. Very okay. good. And do you hear me too? Yeah, I hear you. Do you have um, headphones and a mic? Yes, I have. No, I don't have any mic with me. I have just a headphone. See what the headphones sound like. Just curious. Okay. It might work. It might not work. I try different then. Wait a moment.
How does that sound to you? Oh, uh, yeah. I listen well. It's and better, you? right? Yeah, you sound better. Uh, better? Yeah, much better. Uh, okay, so I, I use this one then, yeah? Yeah, because okay. there's not, not so much background noise. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Because I think it's this one has a lot of noise, right? Yeah, I think it's better. Okay. Uh, I've, I've seen that it's better. I know there is a way to make a background for like a virtual background, mm. but I, I don't, but it's like you have to do some settings in the back. Ah, okay. It's, it's all little... right. Now it's, uh, I am very, you know, but you are recording. Yeah, I'm recording, but I'm going to do it in a second. When everybody gets on, we're going to go on to Facebook. Um, let's see. Uh, mm. Let me just make sure this is working. I, I, I use Zoom, but just for uh, lecturing stuff. And yeah. I never done this like a panel. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is, I really want to know if somebody else is speaking. Yeah. Do I need to like a mute, do mute? Well, I think it might be a good idea if there's background noise, but um, you don't seem like you have background noise, but I can also moderate and help uh, make sure. Let me see. I'm going to, but it sounds good to me. It doesn't sound bad. Hold on. Let me see. I'm going to see if I can get onto this live thing. Just a moment. Okay. Now is on mute. Okay. Hold on a second. So yeah, it sounds good either way. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so complicated. <laughs> mm. So complicated. Let's see here. But your question is only this, what uh, you questioned, right? Oh, well, I, you know, it's not so formal. So maybe mm. it might be that question or maybe other questions or somebody might say something interesting. So it's very just more of a skeleton, more like um, an idea. So not so rigid, not, mm. not, not so German. Uh. <laughs> I am more German. <laughs> <laughs> I am very nervous. Oh yeah, me, me too. I always me too. But it's it's informal. It's a very okay. informal thing. So it's not it's not a big deal. You know, it's it's very easy easy conversation. No big. It's not you know I nothing. Hope so nothing to be <laughs> nothing to be so you know worried about. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So that's okay, me, right? Yeah, you look great. Everything good. looks good. Yeah. Okay. You look really good. So I take mute. Okay. I'm going to Katie. You listen to me. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, your muting is perfect. Your muting and unmuting it's perfect. Good. Huh? Okay. Yeah. So I go to first bathroom, then I come back. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs>
Kito, can you hear, still hear me? Okay, cool. Hey, Kat, can you hear me? Hey, Carmen. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, awesome. Just waiting for the other. Hey, Alice. Hey, Ben. <laughs> Hello, everyone. See. Ben, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes, hey, perfect. Hey, I can put headphones on if you prefer, but... No, you're perfect. Sound great. Alice, can we hear you? Just sound check real quick. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes, there you are. Oh, here. Ready? Hito, yay, you're there. Cool. Carmen, guys, thank you so much for coming, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time. I'm so happy to have all of you guys here together. Um, I know you're all really busy and you know, Ben just had a newborn uh, baby and Alice, I know that you're with um, coaching clients on the weekends and Hito, you can go outside now. I'm like Carmen and I, because <laughs> we're in Los Angeles. So um, yeah, I just wanted to bring us together. Um, you know, I started this together with music uh, back in, at the very beginning of our quarantine, which was probably around um, March. We've been in quarantine in Los Angeles since March 15th. So I just kind of wanted to bring the community together. You know, I know some of you better than others and I just really respect and, you know, love all your, every, everything about you guys and what you do. And, you know, it's a very strange time and I would just love to like kind of open it up at first and go around the room and just talk about, you know, maybe how um, you got into electronic music and, uh, or what your ties are to electronic music and, you know, just kind of um, give a little background story. So I like ladies first. So Hito, do you want to talk about, you know, first, how you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I enjoy my home time. And uh, every, uh, hi, I'm, uh, first of all, I'm Hito. I am Japanese and uh, lives in London, uh, lives in, sorry, Berlin. And uh, yeah, Germany, they very uh, helping uh, artists. It's so good. from the beginning, we are very like uh, feeling so, uh, how can I say, like uh, ca calm down, you know, like uh, there is no, depend on a maybe personal level but uh, i think it's most of the people uh, artists they feel very like uh, c calm down first of all and uh, i really thankful for this treat from yeah. the government how long have you been djing hito have you been djing a long uh, time around maybe mm, tw 20 more or less years Oh. But uh, like I went, you know, like I become international is uh, around the last since enter. They yeah. knows. <laughs> That's a fun party. I love those mm. parties. Two thousand twelve. Those... Yes. Yeah. And mm. did are, and did you always live in Berlin or did you live in Japan? Uh, I I live in I move he here like. 99 actually but at the beginning i was like in and out and maybe settling like 2008 or something danka mm. <laughs> danka <Bitte>. <laughs> <laughs> alice yeah. what about you do you want to give a little bit of your background sure um i'm happy to be here with all of y'all and um Let's see, Kat and I met in, in terms of music and electronic music. See if we can do this. Um, Kat and I met, how many years ago was it? Like six years ago, maybe? Was it, it was a minute. 2013, 14. 2014, okay, 13 or 14 at a uh, Kundalini Yoga and Meditation uh, retreat in um, Española, New Mexico, just outside of Santa Fe. And throughout the years of uh, teaching yoga, practicing Kundalini Yoga, um, my ties would be, um, I really enjoy seeing how the mantra can be remixed in terms of electronic. 
And um, my, my now husband, I met him uh, through the same practice. And so I'm an um, electronic music lover, particularly um, seeing how it can be remixed in terms of uh, mantra music. And so I'm um, a, a fan and also a um, supporter of uh, their work, uh, Feather and Dot. It's an electronic mantra. So I would say that. So an appreciator and um, yeah, a fan. <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy to be here. I would um, definitely call it uh, desert, rock, desert, electro, desert uh, house kind mm -hmm. of vibe, Burning Man, you know, the group is really fantastic, amazing people. Um, ben Turner, hello, welcome, hi, uh, let's see, I'm going to get you there. How did you get into electronic music? You've had a very long journey. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm the older, one of the older guys in the world these days. Um, yeah, I'm, I've been in, in the industry from the age of 16. I got in very, very young as, a, as an intern at a very influential music newspaper called Melody Maker, which I guess to Americans is like the Rolling Stone of its time. Um, and that just got me, you know, got me into the path of the business and the industry and being a journalist. So that was like 1989, dare I say it. Um, and then I just haven't really stopped since. <laughs> um, and I guess if the one thing that proves about this period we're in now is, is we must love what we do, right? Cause we're all working for free. So, um, that sort of says a, says a lot to me. So, um, yeah, this, uh, it's been an amazing journey for me. I'm, I'm very connected to the scene. I'm, I'm connected for life. I love it still as much as I did when I was 16. So. Um, and this time really, I guess, really, as I said, proves to, I think, a lot of us just quite how committed we are. Absolutely. It's definitely a passion um, and a love. Carmen, do you want to give us a little background on your music? No, I just hit unmute. Sure. Um, I don't really like to categorize myself in the electronic music scene. It's more of the music scene for me personally. I mean, I'm very involved in the electronic scene and I have been for a long time. Um, it's hard. I'm probably the oldest one here, right, Ben? I think I'm actually older than you are, so <laughs> I can't carry that, uh, <laughs> that trophy. So I've been doing this a long time. So, you know, I kind of bounce right now currently with my own, you know, music uh, career, uh, producing records for people and such. And I also work at Native Instruments, um, running A&R for the Americas. So that really has me heavily involved in the electronic music scene. So, and it stems from a long time. I mean, I wrote the best electronic album category for the Grammys. So that sort of spearheaded me into that scene back then, which was, Jesus over 10 years ago, I think it was now. So, and just like Ben said, you know, you have to have a passion to, to continue this sort of journey with all of our challenges, you know, right now, because electronic music, a lot of it is, you know, performance, and there's no more performance for a while. So we're all faced with some adversity, and this is not easy for any of us. Absolutely. And that's kind of been shows um, all of you, you know, Hito, you're a DJ I really respect and I love. And I mean, Alice, you're a healer and you deal with trauma and you also, you know, have dealt with like a lot of like challenge, you've overcome a lot of challenging uh, situations and have taught me how to do that. Ben, um, IMS, one of the most um, prolific and respected global music summits in the world. Um, and Carmen, you know, obviously being, you know, Grammy, um, part of the Grammys and also Native Instruments and just like a huge influence um, all across the board in terms of music production, um, music relations, just, I mean, and you're an artist as well and the business part. So it's pretty interesting, you know, and being some of the, you know, most amazing DJs, um, you know, or has in the past and just, you know, just all of you guys all from every single corner. That's why I wanted to bring you together. So I just am curious, you know, what's some of the challenges you might be uh, facing right now in terms of what's going on? And then uh, after we talk about that, I want to talk about maybe a silver lining and, you know, to give our community some hope. So for me personally, um, like last night, I had a dream. I have a DJ bag, a kit, and this is my travel kit. And I, at the, when I realized this was going to happen for a while, the quarantine and the lockdown, 
away in, um, you know, kind of a storage area. And last night I had a dream about it being away and I couldn't get to it. And then my friend Junior Sanchez was in the dream and we were DJing at this place with really bad equipment and it was like very frustrating. And there's just so many like different dreams I've been having and struggles with, you know, I missed um, seeing everybody at WMC, a winter music conference and Miami Music Week. And of course, IMS and Ibiza, like the you know season closing and Personally, I don't think Coachella is going to happen in October. That's just a personal opinion. And now Los Angeles is actually saying that we're going to be in quarantine until August, Los Angeles County. So for me personally, just um, I, I don't know when I'm going to get to perform again and see my friends. And then also it's just been very... Um, I feel powerless, you know, over what's happening. So um, it's, a, it's a, a lot going on. And I just wanted to come, you know, and hear what you guys do and how you're kind of dealing with it and um, what's happening. I mean, I'm sure Ben's excited because he gets to get, take care of his new newborn baby and spend, be a daddy and spend time with the little one. But uh, Ben, what do, you, what do you, I mean, obviously it must've been hard to reschedule IMS until 2021. Yeah, I mean, I think we were one of the first, I think, to move a year away rather than try to move three months down the calendar, which it wasn't really a, a discussion for me. It was, A, I think, just taking good advice and, and reading the right things about the world and the history of these kind of pandemics, um, but also not really wanting to disrupt the rest of the calendar for other conferences. You know, I didn't want to put myself... A month before ADE, I didn't think that was appropriate. So we just went one year ahead, and but now there's all this, you know, immense pressure on us to do a, an online version, and that's one of the sort of challenges I've been going through. I actually just cancelled it last week um, because it was just taking up so much of our time. And we will do something, but we'll do something very different. But I think that's an appropriate topic here. Is just I feel like everyone's just got this pressure to keep doing exactly what they do in the virtual form and. And it translates really well for many people, but it doesn't necessarily translate well for everybody. Um, and I think we're seeing that by the sort of DJ overload of, of, of visual streams. And um, so, no, I, I think we're in a, we're in a challenging time. Um, but you know, yeah, as you say, I'm I'm slightly uh, blessed by the fact that I've got a new baby. So normally I'd be in Ibiza right now. I'd be away for two weeks uh, without seeing a newborn son. So I'm I'm kind of quietly quietly quite happy <laughs> but um but no doubt it's it's a challenge and we're all i think we're all having to dig very deep to stay focused to stay you know level-headed and and um you know a lot of people around me have down days i have down days you know we all need to help each other and pick each other up because you know uh, one of the most important things like i said how much i love what i do earlier but it really hit me about two months ago that I love what I do, but without the travel and without the social aspect and the connectivity of what our scene is about, it's not quite the same. Absolutely. I've noticed um, I've, there's this new term that I've realized it's uh, Zoom fatigued. <laughs> it's like, yeah, every day. <laughs> every day. That's a really good point, Kat. I, I think what Ben said is true is about doing something different and i think it's too easy for people to follow what others are doing but it doesn't quite work for everyone you know and i think the live streams as an example there's such a, a saturation and an overload that i'm not convinced everybody wants to see a banging you know dj set at 9 a.m in the morning or at midnight uh in your kitchen or and i think waiting and being patient and trying to do something that might be different might be a better idea right now because it's we're all a bit lost and there's no answers <clears throat> and even by pushing things back one year is still a question mark and i think also also what you just said ben about so much of what we do selfishly is the social part of it the travel uh where we are that we're doing these things um and it's not the kind of job that you can phone in and just have meetings all day, every hour. So we're all adjusting, you know? It's really, it's a testimonial of how we can survive, you know? It's just, it's definitely not easy. 
Absolutely. I mean, even Lauren Flax was supposed to be with us today. And at the last, I mean, things are changing so quickly. And at the last minute, there was a problem like her home and COVID and there was some kind of emergency and she couldn't be, they had to clear the building. I don't know, something with the building, but everything's just changing every single day. And so the thing that I've found to be um, comforting is to know that, you know, I can go within and really appreciate the people around me right now and also, you know, call and connect and really take a step back, you know, and think about things instead of always going, going, going. Alice, um, what do you think about everything that's going on and happening? Mm. Wow. I think I, I really appreciate you, Kat, bringing this together and Ben and, and Carmen, what you both shared and Hito. It's nice to, nice to be here with you. And wow. Um, I would say I think one of the challenges that a really big challenge is being in the space of the not knowing and how vast that space can feel. And um, that, that has been, um, I, I've been very blessed. I do a lot of work online already with coaching and with leading groups. So my reality hasn't changed that much. There, there are certain aspects. I live in the desert. So we're in our, in our little like corner of the universe, we're pretty happy, you know, and we're, you know, eating well and loving each other and being with nature. So there's a Joshua, lot of Joshua tree is not a bad place to be in quarantine. Not a bad place to be get quarantined. It's really not. So there's, there's a lot of happiness that's happening inside. And I think that the challenge is just this tremendous, I think, global surrender that we're all in as, as human beings of resting in the space of not knowing. And um, there's a lot of days that I do really well with that, but then I have to just be really aware of my own, my own thought life, because if the thoughts start future tripping too much, or my friend once said, going too far down into the doom porn, right? <laughs> like too far, far down certain rabbit holes, I can get really scared. So um, I think the challenge is really staying connected to the truth. And I believe that that's something different for everybody. You know, it's such a time where it's so subjective of how we relate to this. And um, I really feel like the greatest challenge and opportunity is to like root down into what is, what is my truth and what, what feels like truth. And for me, that's being um, in right relationship with, with what's happening in my internal reality, right relationship with spirit, the universe and uh, right relationship with body and um, with loved ones, you know? And so I think, yeah, that, that challenge is of navigating what is our truth and what does this really mean to each of us? Because every single person's having a different experience in relationship to it. And I really think it's like a, a global rebirth and birth is messy, you know? So thank you. Absolutely. I noticed, um, I feel like, the balances um, became so off, you know, that the earth was like, hey guys, I need to recalibrate. So mm -hmm. it's almost like natural. We have these, um, you know, plagues, pandemics, whatever, Spanish flu to kind of bring back the earth. And now the sky in LA is so clear. I don't know, um, Carmen, if you've noticed, but it's just, <laughs> it's like a whole new Los Angeles. Um, Hito, how is it in Berlin for you right now? Keto? Yeah, I, I am most of the time home because I finally I feel like I enter home. So every day is like, li like uh, so many things, like little thing, like uh, finding very old my telephone cable was. I changed like uh, I reach like uh, renovating a little bit of every corner and uh, I enjoy my time a lot at home and recently Berlin became a little bit like uh, you can go out a bit like uh, freely with the distance or uh, like a restaurant and the bar just a particular time open so maybe if I've, I have a feeling, okay, finally sh I go for uh, just a walk because it's sunny time by time because I was home almost uh, most of the time home and uh, try to find out 
more in me, you know, this time. But for example, today I was out a bit, like uh, for just uh, walking around and uh, get some sun. Well, I see very, yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. And how I see the other people on the street. You hear, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, and, does uh, any of us talk about like the clubs there? Or are they talking about reopening? Um, I, my friend uh, told me in Ibiza, maybe August, maybe some of them. Uh, in Berlin, you mean? Uh, well, clubs are closed. Like there is no club happening in Berlin, not yet. Like uh, uh, I think they said until August it they're closed. But uh, like a little bar, you know, they open like just uh, you can drink outside. This kind of situation, and a lot of people in the park I saw today. Like I think it's people who want to be enjoy this, like a little sunny Berlin, you know, like. I think it's last week, last week it's getting sunny and uh, nice weather. You can just for a walk. Have so, they had the DJs in the bars? Have they had any DJs in the small bars? I, I don't know. I don't see any, like, a, like there are not so much music around, you know, like not like uh, before, but I see many DJs in Berlin having a, uh, uh, before Carmen told that uh, like uh, doing the streaming, I see time by time like uh, friends, Facebooks and Instagrams. So some place like they open and they try to like uh, motivate it, I would say, because I think it's Berlin is music city and I think like without the club, without the going out, is completely different uh, reality in Berlin, right? But, but Kat, uh, um, I, um, I was going to say, Kat, uh, I think that's challenging for any of us where you live. Like for Alice, who lives in the desert, maybe your life hasn't changed so much, right? But uh, but I live downtown LA, and whether it's LA or Berlin or Paris, you live in the city for what it gives you, you know, the cafes, the art galleries, the museums, the bars, the restaurants that open all the time. When it's all shut, it's pretty bad to be down here. Did so you work with a, huh? oh, it just, you work with a company, you work with Native Instruments and Native Instruments is obviously based in Berlin and the United States. What is Native Instruments talking about doing? Um, are you guys changing your business model at all? Are you guys talking about doing an online type of anything? Or, I mean, has it changed? I mean, obviously you guys are not going into the office, but has it changed any? Um, if you're talking about internally, the offices are shut. I mean, the Berlin office, I think is open now as of last week, but nobody really wants to go back. I mean, I know in the LA office, when it opens, no one wants to go because there's so many rules. You can't meet with people. There's, you can't have meetings. There's really no point. If you're talking externally, or I, well, I should say like no point now. I mean, that will change of course, but um, in the sense of online business stuff, I mean, business is doing really well. I mean, people buy software, they buy hardware, they want to make music. So in one sense, people are enjoying making music by staying home. It's challenging to interact with people to you know, collaborate. That's nothing to do with us. It's just the reality of it. But I was just sort of more commenting about being in a city that you thrive of what the city gives you. I almost am jealous of people that are fortunate to live somewhere remote because we'll never have this kind of solitude ever in our life again. I'm certain of it. So it's a chance whether you have a newborn baby or a loving husband or wife or something, it's in a weird way, kind of nice. I mean, I use that term very loosely, but when you're in a city and you walk out and everything is boarded up, you're literally walking from one point to the next and getting inside. And then you see the homeless in another level 
that you haven't seen before because before it's mixed with everyday people, let's say. So it's, that's hard. I could really imagine that that's, that is a, a very challenging thing to navigate every day to see the level of isolation and things shut down and to really see things boarded up and, and homeless people, you know, on the, the suffering and, and really seeing the isolation um, at that level in a very urban environment. I mean, it's also a desperation. I mean, not to yeah. take this more negative, yeah. <laughs> but- Be real, brother, be real, yeah. I had to go to Long Beach yesterday to pick up my motorcycle. Anyway, it's a long story. So I took, you know, the blue line and I hadn't taken the train since, you know, COVID uh, for obvious reasons. And it was unbelievable just what one guy had just got out of jail because he had the fatigues on. And then one guy had a seizure or something. This is all within like 20 minutes. Right as I was hitting Compton, the guy's laying on the ground, he's bleeding. The paramedics come, the guy who got out of jail because they're letting people out of jail, you know? So this kid had the LA County jail thing on, right? The cops came in his bag. He had a plastic zipper suit that they're given. He immediately changed in the train and he dashed out. And it's just, it was real just to see that going on the train on the blue line through Compton to Long Beach. And it just reminded me, um, you know, a lot of stuff has not changed, but because everyone is dispersed, you only see the desperation. So like I just walked to the farmer's market downtown, but it's the homeless level is just another situation down here. Is the, is the farmer's, farmer's market open in downtown LA? Of course, yeah, they have very strict rules. It's just one way, you have to enter one way, you have to be masked and gloved. They have it roped off so you can't touch the produce, but you'd say, I'll take this and this, and then you have to exit one way. There's a lot of security. Um, it's fine, but you know, it's, it's close to Skid Row, so. Well, that's good to, I mean, I, I would rather go there than like Trader Joe's or Costco waiting for hours to get into the, or well, maybe not hours, but. I mean, I go to, a, to the Asian markets in a little Tokyo because they're quicker and they have everything. So Native Instruments is pretty much like running as normal. It sounds like business as normal other than going business into the office. As usual. Um, you know, we did a great uh, promotion in the beginning where we gave away some free software. We're about to do a huge campaign where we're giving away a lot of money to uh, musicians in need. And we're talking to a lot of cool artists to donate sounds that we're going to match. So we're going to be giving away like $100,000 or something like this where we're giving back. So we're trying our best, you know, to help people who are in need and a lot of musicians and you know music makers are suffering. Ben, I'm just curious if you could just uh, speak to us a little bit about like the artists that you work with and kind of like, you know, your team and what's happening and what the feel is over there. Yeah, I mean, um, I feel like in the beginning there was, um, you know, so some of them were kind of just thinking this was a great break, you know, and great to be at home and, and weren't really looking at the longer term um, situation. Um, you know, I think we, I like to think we've been very proactive and very informed of what's going on. You know, I myself created AFEM, the Association for Electronic Music, which is a, a, an ethics organization, a nonprofit organization for electronic music. So there's been a huge amount of dialogue uh, within that organization, but also externally to that. And also obviously, of course, through I, IMS. So, um, but even outside of stuff that I do, you know, I, I joined various WhatsApp groups, the, the two that are really interesting, one, which is a manager's group where there's about a hundred electronic music managers on one WhatsApp group. We turn that into a phone call every couple of weeks. And it's been nice to kind of share thoughts and wisdom with people who normally you sort of feel like you're slightly in competition with. Um, and it, cause it, it can feel like that at times, rightly or wrongly. Um, but the share of knowledge and the honesty and the openness has been, I think one of the sort of revelations of this time and the positives of this time. And I hope that, you know, I hope that dialogue will continue. So, um, so I, th I feel like we're, we're very informed. We're very at the source of a lot of, of wider thinking. Um, 
but you know that can also be overwhelming as well because everyone's got different experiences different views different thoughts um but you know i think most of the artist community now is is accepting that this is definitely not this year it's at best kind of spring next year that this kind of really starts to pick up again but even that people people are questioning um so um yeah i think it's it's very hard for people whose whose life has been about travel really i mean that's the basis of of the international touring dj is the jumping on and off of planes and different cultures the, the different connectivity the the you know, you can't underestimate how much of a life change this is for, for those people. And, and to be honest, there's not much sympathy for them. Um, I think there's very little sympathy for the artistic community in general, way beyond electronic music. But generally, I feel like we, we feel a bit unsupported by governments, not in Germany and certain countries have been fantastic. But in, in many places, you know, the arts are underappreciated and undervalued. And then when you drill into that, electronic music is, feels like it's kind of at the end of the end of the importance list. So, um, you know, I, I think that's that's a lot for us all to handle. Um, we were probably the most proactive, I feel, and one of the first industries to really close down. Um, and unfortunately, we'll be the last to to come back online. So, um, you know, we're we're gonna we're gonna see the full extent of this of this whole um, process. Um, and then, of course, there's the reality that I think, you know, we are all as managers having, and artists having to accept that, you know, even if this is, does come back online, this could be our, our way of working. It could be a very stock start scenario going forwards that, you know, we need to be prepared that more of these kind of things will happen again. And, and so therefore, you know, as a manager kind of putting in place a lot of the online opportunities um, I don't just mean streaming, but you know, into many other aspects of things that perhaps you've been talking about, but we're on a bit of the back burner because you're always in this cycle of moving and touring and booking shows. And um, so, I, I, I take a real positive from from this from the, the big pause. And you know, I think you just got to work as proactively proactively as you possibly can um, to build a business model for your artist that is not. 90% touring it needs to become something that's more 60 40 70 30 at least you know um because yeah it's very clear that that the the i think the vulnerability of our culture has really been displayed and exposed by this and that's something that we all need to 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 learn from absolutely and that brings me to my second question you know um one of the reasons i you know asked Alice on is because she had a, a production company that was a streaming and live events like, um, you know, internet streaming. And then um, Carmen, I know that, you know, you're knowledgeable when it comes to uh, publishing and, you know, music uh, rights and obviously Ben. And I'm just curious, like, I mean, I don't know about Hito, but for myself as a DJ, I, I'm, I'm curious and wondering like, okay, we've always, you know, known like placing music in ads, placing music on like here, that's like a great revenue source. So I'm just curious, like, do you have any advice for people, um, artists moving forward? Like what is some um, kind of a goal to, you know, get into um, moving forward in, in terms of uh, revenue? Um, I'll start it if it's okay. I mean, I don't think anybody has an answer, but I'm curious what everybody else thinks about putting out some new music because I think I've heard mixed from certain types of artists. Some artists are saying, I don't want to put out new music because I can't tour it, I can't support it. And then other artists are saying, no, I want to put music out there because that's what people are doing and people need new music. So I'm just curious opening it up because I think you should put out new music and whether you're able to tour it, obviously we can't. So I encourage that, but I'm curious, Ben and, and everyone else. Yeah, I, I think it's an amazing time to, to put music out. Um, you've got people's attention. I think people are, are a little fatigued by, by some of the streaming stuff. And I think part of that is because not enough of that is new, new music and new, new content. You know, I think, I, I, I would like to think a lot of the artists that have been very quiet in this period are busy recording and about to drop something out. And, um, you know, I, I don't think people should wait because who knows what the future is going to look like. So I think putting that music out there and, and 
and that music being remembered for being something that got you through a very dark time is 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 what music should be about and you know no doubt the music being created now is inspired by by the isolation by the the feelings that people are going through and i i would love to hear that from from everybody you know i just want to say i you know um my husband is a musician and he's um electronic mantra and he also just released a, a rock and roll album, a beautiful album. And he's in the same situation where his plan was to tour this whole year. That was our plan. And um, so he's sitting at home with the new album, but what he's been doing is he's been creating um, more new music and the things that are coming out, just getting to witness it is so beautiful. Um, and it's really just an emanation of the time that we're in right now. And um, I had a friend share with me that, um, during the time of the bubonic plague and the dark ages, she was sharing me, with me how the, um, the monks created these beautiful illuminated manuscripts. And some of the most beautiful artistry uh, came in the times of these plagues of just so many years of having to be indoors or stay inside. So it, it is in, a, in, a, in just kind of a beautiful way, a deep opportunity for creativity, like on another, on another level of reflection and depth. Thank you guys for saying that. It's so powerful. And just as a listener, it's beautiful to hear new music being made in our house every day. I think as well, our, I think our culture was also born in the late 80s by well, the best music was created in quite isolated places, Detroit, Chicago, Manchester, you know, places where there were struggles and life wasn't very easy. And that kind of that you know, personal torture created beautiful music and that was the foundation of our, of our scene. So I, um, yeah, I, I hope that continues from all over the world. Yeah. So with um, one of the managers, um, Jay Pigeon, he is just sharing that, you know, things are just being rescheduled, be rescheduled, rescheduled constantly. I'm just curious, like um, Ben, what is your feeling in terms of like being a manager? Like, what are you telling your, like, what's the advice you're giving your artist? about about release dates or yeah just in general about like what to do with um release dates or like gigs and um kind of what is your philosophy um yeah. around what's happening i mean gigs we're all having to play you know a kind of a difficult game with not a game but a difficult process with promoters who uh you know believe their shows can happen i mean Somebody in France tried to reschedule a show from from August the thirty first to September the fifth this week, this year, just to get around the French curfew laws, and and it just blows my mind that some people are just not really following the reality of what this is. Um, you know, like I said, we will be the last culture to kind of come online, so as in go back to how it was. So, if it goes back to how it was, so I think. Um, you know, I, I, most of the live industry is now, I think, being more practical and and. As Carmen says, who even who even thinks next day, April is possible for a Coachella? And I heard Coachella may move to October next year so that they don't have to move it a third time. And I think that's really good thinking, you know, um, because we all have to consider the impact of this on consumers and flights that have been booked and hotels that have been booked and travel. Um, so I think on the gig side, I think most people now understand that, you know, really the earliest we're looking at is well, you know, is Miami March next year a reality? It's a very difficult decision that Ultra must be making right now is, do they book Ultra and market the show and put it on sale? Like, there's, there's you know, that, that's probably the, the first big one that's going to come at our culture. And if you remember, they were one of the first to have to cancel. So we really are in this one year cycle now. Um, and then in terms of music, I, you know, the labels are generally functioning and operating pretty well. The streaming services after the initial dip, I think is starting to pick up. Um, I think, you know, like, like I said, I think if you've got a record ready to go, you should be getting it out as soon as you can. I'd rather get it out before the world comes back online um, because you've got this great moment of catching people's attention. So, um, yeah, I think finish your music, finish the product, <clears throat> set a release date and, and go for it. Um, you know, I, I don't see any reason, any reason not to on that side, but, but live is a difficult, more difficult conversation. Um, but like I said, I think there's a greater understanding now and, and um, yeah, a bit more of a realistic approach going on. So I don't know if uh, you guys have seen, but Production Club has uh, produced a rave suit. Have you guys seen that? 
<laughs> and there's even a, 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 a portal for uh, vaping and <laughs> for drinking water. Um, yeah. So just moving forward, like what I thought, what, what I've been discussing and um, kind of what you were talking about coming back online, so to speak, in, you know, in person is that I think the scene will go down to more local and, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, in LA, you can't bring someone from Berlin and um, China. So I'm just, I'm curious, whenever we do go back, what is it like? What is it going to be like? What do you guys think it's going to be like? Anybody? Carmen, maybe? Meaning go back to a live venue? Well, just in terms of people getting together. So I'm thinking, um, oh, like, I see what you're saying. yeah, I, I, well, my, I think it's, we're going to first go into a controlled environment, you know, where if let's say tomorrow they open up the door for everyone, are you going to want to go to some club or some big venue? I'm not convinced everyone will. Some will, of course, as opposed to more intimate settings that you can control. Um, I often think a way to ease into this, and I don't understand who, I, I'm curious to see who's going to do this first. Like for instance, in Prague, I believe they're allowed 200 people for concerts. That's what I was told. So if I'm an artist, this is just my opinion. Let's say whether it's a legacy artist, you know, or somebody new and buzzing, you sell, I don't know, a hundred tickets that may be more expensive, but you can buy drinks. There's areas to distance and it's a live stream, but it's private and it's a Q and A and you feel. So if the artist is in LA or somewhere else, you have this intimate setting, you're still around people. I think that's a perfect way to ease into it and test the waters. Uh, because if not, I'm just, the live streams are just too overwhelming. And there's, it's not interactive. And that's why if, it's a, if you're paying a ticket and it's private and you can speak to that artist and there's a curator and a host, I'm waiting for that first, personally. If you're talking about going in to see performances. I think it's why the Zoom, you know, the Zoom, the Zoom parties like the one that Pasha did were, were one of the more talked about streams because of the social element of, you know, people actually turning it into the community aspect of why they love going to see gigs and DJs. I mean, we all know that the DJ is the star, but, but the other 50% of what gets people to gigs and clubs is, is the shared experience with like-minded people. And that's why I think that Zoom stream was so, was so talked about, but you know, I, I guess I, I'm old enough to come from a time before DJs were traveling all over the world. And, and I absolutely see, certainly when I look at the UK or I look at Germany or I look at America, um, going back to that culture of, you know, I remember the days when DJs used to do three gigs a night in the UK and they would start in Liverpool, stop in Birmingham and end up in London for the 6 a.m. slot. And um, I don't think it'll go quite to that extreme, but I do think, you know, look at where you live, grow from your local scene, support the club culture around you, um, take a residency, you know, get a residency in your club. I heard one, one very big international DJ I won't mention told me that he's staying in LA and he's going to start a weekly residency in, in LA or at least two or three weeks in, in the weekend. And I do think that's the, 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 rather than sitting here waiting for your international calendar to kind of come back online, I think you, you should get out there and start playing where you can drive to. And that, that could be a very positive reset for the scene anyway, I think on, on many levels. Hito, do you have any uh, kind of thoughts on that? Berlin to play in Berlin. So I already started to play like a few years ago in Berlin, like one, uh, one of, uh, where before was Ipsen and now it's, I'm having on my night in Watergate, but it's uh, also nothing happening now. But the thing is, for me, um, I've been thinking this moment or this time that my concept with the music, like uh, what my concept inside is doesn't, hasn't changed anything like I have a passion for the music and the the thing is just uh, I have to see and uh, observe what uh, my environment is changing and how should I change and adapt or create like a new way to express 
and uh, that, because inside of me, my passion is uh, it's not it's forever. I feel like I have a passion for the music and sharing with the people. I really want to uh, share as much as I can, and then you know, if some people have uh, need a help, I, I I try to help. Maybe in the music way, musically way too. You know, I kind of go to the, the 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 hospital to help so i try to and these days i also find out because i my big challenge is to see how i am <laughs> because you have to face really like yourself now like your own nature you know there is a good good feeling and there is a bad feeling too and I have to deal with all. And also the, you know, my passion and concept and how to transform this to the, you know, into the music and how to share. And that's maybe my challenge now, right now. So I appreciate what the Ben, Kame, Alice and Katie, you, what we discuss right now, and uh, you know, for me, I I try to I have a down day too. But I I hold this situation makes me very more, more creative than I think it's before, <laughs> because I totally forget myself. If you see all the all the time like outside. Or you, you know, like a different environment you traveling, and you eat your local food. You, you know, you your uh, like a local food there, sleeping in the desert, sleeping in the, you know, like uh, on the mountain seaside. But right now, I come back more in, in me, and I also like. A, find out like, wow, I, I have this passion still. And, you know, I made a one, like a, a two track of the two mixes of uh, in between nature. So maybe Alice knows these directions of the music, I guess. Like uh, with a bit of nature sound uh, with electronic music together. And I made a like a mental session. <laughs> I titled myself <laughs> and like uh, uh, five to eight uh, fre frequencies. Like I use this kind of, you know, like a music, like uh, music. So now, you know, I create like a different way of exp like expression with my passion of the music. But, you know, you have to keep this passion all the time, like uh, sometimes put it out, sometimes take yourself and uh, take your time to, you know, you have to, you know, understand who you are, I guess. Then, you know, you can also go on, like, as the consequences of your life, you know. I, for me, it's like uh, my life. It's uh, my lifestyle. So, you know, downtime is also my life too, you know? Part of uh, my life. It's most important maybe moment of my life. And I don't want to forget this. And I want to go on with this, like a real me, <laughs> you know? I think, it's, and, um, I, think it's really, I think you're touching a really good point, Hito, that I think... <laughs> It's, no, I think it's really an important time um, to maybe find a new rhythm to your life, you know, and, you know, right now I'm spending 15 hours a day, 12 to 15 hours a day on calls, Zoom calls from 6 a.m. till, till when, whenever I stop and it's never ending and you sort of have to ask yourself, you know, do we need to be doing all these calls? We're all debating stuff that we don't really know the answer to. Um, and if you're not finding time within that to create a new rhythm to your life, whether it's meditating, um, which, which I do, whether it's, you know, I'm swimming every day and lucky to have found a place that I can go close by to swim. 
um, you know, those, those, just those little things have just changed my, my balance and that was something I was needing. So I think everyone needs to look within at kind of how they work. And, you know, a few people within our industry have said to me, you know, I've realized I don't need to travel as much as I did, you know, and not, not for any other reason than they just don't need to. We all feel we need to be at these events. We need to be seen at this event or that event. Like, is, you know, I think we all need to just sort of question that a little bit and because we need to reduce travel anyway with the climate crisis, which is obviously was about to become something I felt the world was really taking seriously. And, and then COVID happened and, you know, how that's connected is obviously very important too. But but anyway, I think, you know, a lot of people around me have found meditation a really valuable source of just taking that pause. Um, and, uh, and yeah, there's, that's now turning into lots of creative music projects around music meditation. There, there, there's a lot of them out there and a lot of great platforms and it's a really good form of expression for people. So, yeah. You know, Ben, I think that's a good point about the whole meeting thing because However one decides to uh, divide their day, whether it's a creative part or a personal part, but if you're talking about the meetings, it's very easy because everyone knows we have nothing but time. So yeah. you're on these calls, I know I am as well, especially if you're dealing with other places around the world from six, seven, eight in the morning, and it goes on. And I know with Native, they're talking about on Wednesdays, no meetings, like you're not allowed to have internal meetings because it's just nonstop. And it's every 30 minutes, every one hour. So I think it's important for all of us to remind ourselves. I know for me, when I'm working at home here, I take walks every day, like midday. I don't care if I go through Skid Row or the Flower Mart or Staples Center. I'm walking somewhere to decompress. And I think uh, we have to remind ourselves about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's very hard to be creative when you're back to back on. I mean, I was always on back to back on calls most days in the morning anyway, but now it seems to have extended even longer. And, and you, you, you've got you to find that proactive work time where you're on, you know, you're being creative and really drilling into something new and exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Alice, which is, um, what is one of your, I mean, you are an ultimate meditator. If you guys don't know, Alice is like, she's the lady, but do you want to give us maybe one of your favorite ones or something that we could, like maybe a tool that we could use? Mm. I, I just love what everybody's really been saying about, um, I, Hito, what you said about this. I love the, the nature, the idea of your facing your own nature and also the idea of like then taking that and reframing the music, you know, using nature. It's so beautiful, you know, and what you said, Ben, about discovering a new rhythm. And I just really can hear the, the creativity being intermixed and interwoven with nature and what Carmen's saying, like taking a walk every day and, I really feel um, that I think really mother nature is really one of the, the most beautiful answers right now to helping us through this time. And um, something my, my husband and I started doing was um, we um, started, uh, uh, it's very small, but we started a, a garden, like a small garden where we live and um, started growing like little seedlings and watching them grow. Like we have some zucchini and, some cilantro and um, some beans that we planted. And I, I really think one of the ultimate ways to, to help us balance during this time is, you know, spending that time with nature and um, spending that time discovering more about our own nature, you know, through creativity and through meditation with what y'all have mentioned here. I think those are really the answers. And um, I think another big one is um, I had a friend tell me once she said, um, that the, the only way out of the matrix is service. And so when we can really be of service to our loved ones, to our community, um, that, that for me is the, the answer that I can continue to go back to again and again. And you know that cat, right? Like more, and I think everybody on the call here, but um, yeah, I think that service is the way out and it's the, also the way in deeper to us. So. Wow. I I'm going to, I am going to print that out. The way out of the matrix is through service. I'm going to print that out and put that all over my house. Um, something else, uh, one of the questions on Facebook, the live question was, um, Ben, what else do you think uh, DJs can do other than streaming and making music? But is there anything else that DJs can do that you would suggest during this time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, there are, well, obviously, beyond making music, um, 
you know, finding new avenues to make music like the meditative world. I think there's a lot of examples out there of platforms you can go to and I'm seeing some bigger and smaller artists experimenting with that. Um, I think education is a huge, huge factor. Um, obviously, maybe that appeals more to the slightly older artists, but, but that's not necessarily the case. I think whatever level you're at and people love your music and your production, share how you, how you make that music. Um, I've really been loving what Patreon are doing as a site and allowing artists the opportunity to monetize their ecosystem. Um, and, you know, obviously we're in a very delicate place where to be seen to be trying to make money is also being criticized by a lot of people within the culture. So it's very sensitive, but I think Patreon is a really uh, well-balanced platform, you know, pitched at the right level generally for artists and and that's something that I would encourage most people to, to get deeper into. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, other things use this time to make sure your, your, your publishing and your, your money's being collected properly. Um, it's a really good time for housekeeping. Like if you're not doing your housekeeping now, it's a huge mistake. This is really a time to fix all the, the holes and optimize everything in your ecosystem that, that is bringing you revenue. Um, yeah. And I, and I think just really, digging deep about about what you love and, and what inspires you and how can I move into a slightly different world, whether it's composing music for film and television or advertising, like, you know, there, there, are, there are so many levels or, or avenues of monetization connected to creativity in our culture. And I think you just need to look a bit broader than your, than your normal world. Um, you know, somebody, an artist said to me the other day, I, I no longer want to be in the club business. I want to be in the music business. And that sounds like a silly comment, but, but so many DJs don't actually live in the music business. They just earn money from, from DJing. And I think, you know, maybe, you know, they just need to look a, a little bit deeper at, 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 at the world around them and the p potential ecosystem there. Um, gaming is obviously massive. Um, you know, I think the, you know, the whole, I mean, there's a whole huge rabbit hole to open about monetization, but in terms of creativity and seeing all of the games now kind of participating in DJ culture is really interesting. And, and the sort of gamification of our culture, I think is, is whether we like it or not inevitable. Um, and at least in the gaming culture, the audiences value the content and they pay for it as they go. So maybe there's, maybe there's something there. Maybe we can get Moby to teach um, a master class on licensing and syncing since he is, you know, for me, the ultimate DJ licensing, um, mm. you know, man in our community. Carvin, what do you think? Because you, you have a lot of experience with like licensing and syncing. Um, Jesus. I, and again, I wouldn't say that there's one answer of how to do that. I think in, like we said earlier, now is the time to put out new music. But I also think there's more static, there's more, you know, competition to get your music heard if you're talking about strictly just the licensing. So I do like Ben's comment about somebody said, I don't want to be in the, what did he say, the DJ culture, but more of the music business. And I think that's the mindset you have to have. And that's kind of earlier when I had said, I'm in the electronic music scene, but I feel like I'm in the music business and I like all of us. And I think if you have that mindset and you're easy to adjust and find solutions, which to me is, I think the number one thing, because being older, I've seen trends and this is not a good a comparison with what we're going through in the world, but whether it's musical trends or technology trends, a lot of people are stubborn and they don't want to adjust. And I think if you're, it's almost like you're in sports and you're down by so many points you've got to adjust. This is the score and we've got to figure out how to win. And I think for a lot of people, if you have an open mind and you can find a way to adjust, you're going to get through this best you can. But if people that are stubborn, like I can't travel, I can't do my gig, I'm not going to put out music, you know, good luck with that. And uh, again, just to mirror what Ben said, you know, about um, finding ways to clean house, finding ways to put time. I mean, I had somebody tell me, uh, just before the first uh, quarantine and she says, Hey, I'm going to go off social media because we have two weeks left before, you know, what we thought was the first deadline. And she said, um, I want to learn something. I want to do something besides play video games, watch 10 movies a night or learn how to cook bread and fucking cookies, you know? 
And I really thought that was fantastic. And my son, you know, was the same way. He said, you know, dad, I don't want to be like all my friends. And so he wanted to read books and stuff. And I just, it, I just think that it's important to get out of your own self and find something else, you know? Absolutely. I, um, you know, I have a branding and marketing um, company and I would say I would love for all the DJs to go through all of their platforms and look at it and fix up the links and fix up the content because there's some like old content and it's just, uh, yeah, we need to like clean house. And I also started a, a coaching program, Soul Society, Dr. Aaron's, and we've been learning a lot about um, inner work because everything on the outside is a reflection of the inside, right? So I'm just, I'm so grateful for this time, but I also low key, I don't, cause I think in LA, we're not going to be opening any clubs for any kind of residencies or anything until like August, September, maybe, I don't even know, but low key, I want to start like an underground party where there's only like 20 people invited and we have like a big screen and then Hito can DJ from Berlin and then we go to somewhere else because <laughs> I'm going to die this summer without dancing <laughs> with people. Um, thank you guys so much. I'm so grateful that you guys came and took this time. I know, I mean, Zoom overkill, but I'm so grateful. I just want to go around the room and um, if everybody just wants to share one word of like your intention for this time and um, maybe we start with Alice and go to Ben, Carmen, and then Hito. Uh, I think my word is um, to open. To open more. Yeah. Uh, mine is to inspire. To keep inspiring other people around each other and the community. I guess mine would be practicing patience. <laughs> which is challenging for all of us. Mine is, uh, for a long time, I can't change love. <laughs> it's all about. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think mine is acceptance, just accepting what is and taking it day by day and just accepting this is this is what it is. So let's make the best of it. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> so grateful so for you guys. You Thank guys you, Kat. So much. Thank you. Guys. Thank Thank you. you. Bye. Happy to see you. And I'll see you guys on the dance floor next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kat. Thank you. Thank you.